Alrighty, I want to find the inverse of these three functions. So to find the inverse of this, the first step on all inverses is to simply switch x and y. So the first step is to just write it with x and y flip-flopped. But then what you want to do is you now have to solve to get y by itself. That's your next step. Because think about it, if you want to graph it, don't you want y by itself? And don't all functions have y equals? So that's what we want to do. So I want to get y by itself. So that what do I first get rid of? Well, I have to get rid of the 64. The reason for that, whenever you solve for something, do you understand you're doing PEMDAS backwards? So you first add, subtract. Then you multiply, divide. Then you do exponents. Then you do parentheses. It's all backwards. So the first thing you're going to do is add, subtract. So get rid of that. So I'm going to minus 64 to both sides. And I now have x minus 64 equals y cubed. OK? There's nothing left to multiply or divide off of this. So what I have to do is get rid of that exponent. In order to get rid of the exponent, you're going to do, this is a third power, so you're going to want to cube root both sides. You root both powers. So I'm going to cube root both sides. And I now have a y over here equals the cube root of x minus 64. Any y is all by itself, so we are done. So I'm going to rewrite it so it's a little bit better looking. Both are good answers. I just rewrote it. So that right there would be the inverse. Now be aware of this. If you start with the cube, you're going to end with the cube root. If you start with a second power, you're going to end with a second root, called a square root. Whenever you take an inverse, you're going to kind of flip-flop the power type. So to find the inverse of this, the first step, once again, is to switch x and y. <laughs> so once you switch x and y, don't you want to get y by itself? So to get y by itself, I first add, subtract anything over that's farthest kind of away from the y. So let's get rid of this. So to get rid of that negative 3 off of the y side, I add it off. So I now have x plus 3 equals, parenthesis, y minus 2 to the 1 half. All right, there's nothing left added, multiplied, or anything on the outside of that. So I now have to get rid of the power. That's the next piece. How do you get rid of a 1 half? Well, you square both sides. To get rid of a 1 half power, you square both sides, and that would leave you y minus 2 over here. But if I square the right side, I also have to square the left side. So you're left with that. So y is not completely by itself, so I have to get rid of this minus 2. So the opposite of minusing 2 is adding 2. So we're going to add 2 over. So my final answer is y equals, we have the x plus 3 squared, and we have a plus 2. That right there is the inverse of this. So a square root ends with the squared. Now, if you think about this graph, isn't this a parabola with an hk of 3, 2, or a left? 3 and up to HK shift. So, for this last one, first step on inverse, like always, is switch X and Y. Now, I want to get Y by itself. So I'm going to get rid of this 30. So I'm going to minus 30 from both sides. So I now have x minus 30 equals negative 5 the cube root of y. Now I've got to get rid of this negative 5 in front of the cube root of y. So to get rid of that, it's multiplied on. So to get rid of it, you divide it off. So that would cancel it off, or divide off. So that leaves me with x minus 30 over negative 5 equals the cube root of y. So the last step is to get the cube root off the y. To get a cube root off the y, 
I need to cube both sides. So I'm going to cube both sides, and I'm left with y equals x minus 30 over negative 5 all cubed. That looks really ugly, but that is an answer. Now, a better way to write this answer right there, oops, what you want to do is, this is not a good graphing format. So I'm going to write it in a little bit better format. If I have this to the third power, isn't that meaning I'm cubing the top and cubing the bottom? So here's what I mean by that. Isn't it going to be, really, x minus 30 cubed over negative 5 cubed? Aren't we really cubing top and bottom? So what that means is I could also rewrite this as, isn't that a negative 125 on the bottom? So I'm going to pull that negative 125 out as an A value and leave it like this to the third. Now, I might have blew your mind there, but this right here becomes negative 125 on the bottom. So I pulled that out as a negative 1 over 125. That's your A value. Isn't this now your H, and isn't your K zero? Isn't this better for graphing? But I'm okay with this answer. This is an okay answer for inverse, but if we wanted to graph the inverse, wouldn't going to the green be extremely helpful? So do not worry about getting to here. Just know that it's a process if you wanted to graph it.